Did you know trillions of tiny creatures live all around you, even on your body? These invisible creatures are called microorganisms. And in this video by The Daily Eco, we'll explain what they are, their characteristics and their classification. What are microorganisms? Microorganisms are microscopic living organisms found throughout our environment. They are too small to be seen with the naked eye and require a microscope for observation. Microorganisms come in a diverse range of forms, including single-celled, also called unicellular, and multicellular. That means that there are two main classifications for microorganisms, prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Microorganisms play a significant role in our world, with some being beneficial and others pathogenic. This video will explore their characteristics and the various classification systems used to categorize them. Characteristics of microorganisms Microorganisms require nutrients such as proteins and carbohydrates for feeding and survival. They need water for growth, but their amount varies among different microorganisms. For instance, bacteria need less water compared to molds or fungi. Microorganisms typically thrive within a narrow temperature range, which differs by group. Most develop optimally between 30 and 50 degrees Celsius. Some microorganisms may need oxygen, others no oxygen at all, and others can tolerate its presence. Microorganisms have narrow pH tolerance ranges. We categorize them as acidophilic in acidic environments, neutral in neutral pH environments, or alkaliphilic in alkaline environments. The time required for their development and growth depends on the microorganism's type and how optimal the conditions are. Hence, we distinguish between slow-growing and fast-growing microorganisms. So, we can classify microorganisms into four large groups. Bacteria Bacteria are unicellular microorganisms, meaning they consist of a single cell with unorganized genetic material not contained within a nucleus. They reproduce through binary fission and can exchange genetic material via transformation, transduction or conjugation. Bacteria come in various shapes, including round, spiral and small curved forms. Virus Viruses are acellular entities composed of a protein capsid which may or may not have an envelope and a DNA or RNA molecule. They are obligate parasites, which means they must infect a host cell to reproduce and survive. Depending on the shape of their capsid, viruses can be more or less rounded or cylindrical. Some viruses have more complex structures with a head and a tail. They can either kill the infected cell or use it as a reservoir, remaining dormant until conditions are favorable for release. Fungi Fungi are unicellular or multicellular microorganisms. They reproduce through budding, where a protusion grows from the parent organism until it is ready to detach. Fungi can also reproduce through sporulation or by fragmenting into smaller pieces. They can exist as yeast or as filamentous organisms with hyphae. Parasites Parasites include protozoa, such as amoebas and helminths like worms. Protozoa are unicellular, while helminths and worms are multicellular. Although parasites are typically not classified as microorganisms, the study of microbiology often overlaps with parasitology. Beneficial microorganisms Beneficial microorganisms produce advantages for humans, either by being part of the human microbiota or by producing valuable products like cheese, beer, antibiotics, yogurt or bread. While it may seem that microorganisms are harmful, most are beneficial. 
this group includes certain bacteria and fungi, but not viruses. The human microbiota is crucial for survival and well-being. It plays roles such as protecting against infections and aiding in digestion processes. Pathogenic microorganisms. This group includes microorganisms capable of causing diseases in their hosts, such as viruses, bacteria, and fungi. They infect host cells, reproduce with them, and either kill or damage the cells, leading to diseases. Bacteria can also produce toxins that cause harm. These pathogens are combated with antimicrobials, which are antibiotics for bacteria, antivirals for viruses, and antifungals for fungi. The degree of the pathogenicity of a microorganism depends on the immune status of the infected individual. Well, that's it for today. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to leave us a like and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. Until next time.